Welcome back to Ty and That Guy. I am Wes Chatham. This is my good friend, Ty Frank. We have the lovely Kara G and the wonderful, multi-talented Sheree. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> you said I, mean, yeah. yes. I like to say the adequate carriage and, and the transcendent no, story. Mediocre, the above mediocre yeah. carriage. And, and I should never the queen you. herself. <laughs> That's I, I think it's fair, I mean, right? Yeah. I do fair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kara, we should thank them for having Thanks us. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, yes, yes. I'm sorry about it. I'm sorry about it. I should have put more energy into it. I'm sorry. We call it our new show. Our new show is called Between Two Idiots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Between Two Idiots. That's what we do that. Yeah. Um, I just want to start by saying, I think I was just blown away by your performance. I text you after I saw it, and I, I uh, out of every any performance on any season of The Expanse, any show, this I felt like was one of the best things that, that I've seen. And your confidence and the, your swagger and your style, but coupled with this vulnerability and this newfound empathy, it was so powerful and so well done. And I, I, I was just floored by it. And you know, particularly this episode when you're walking with the guards on each side and you're making this, this, this apex moment of this meeting of these two, you know, two of my favorite characters. This is, I'm, I'm most excited about this this after show than any that we've done so far. And I just wanted to say that before we started. It's Thank just you such so beauty. much. I'm so humbled and speechless. <laughs> Honored, really. Receiving it from a colleague, an amazing <laughs> actor himself. It's, it's, I will take it seriously, and I thank you very much. Um, it was an amazing... Karen and I were looking oh, forward to this meeting. For, for years. years. Yeah. Yeah. How many years? Three, four years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we saw each other in the corridors and like, I hope they're going to write us. Write us. <laughs> no, do it no. together. And finally, and the walk you're referring to, yeah. it oh. comes from a, a long time of waiting for this meeting. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, the fact that what I love about it, a um, couple of the last episodes in season six, the fact is that we see the array of hopes. And this one, I know what I'm going to do in this one. That's why I'm heading there, hopeful to be able to make this come through. And that was, that was the motivation behind uh, the walk. Like, let's go do it. Let's work with Kara. <laughs> Such an amazing oh. actress. And let's, let's run the lines that... <laughs> Amazing, brilliant writers. Don't play him. For us. <laughs> yeah, don't play <laughs> me. <laughs> no, <that's true>. Writers. <laughs> but, the novelists, I should yeah. say, because you're really the novelists, right? And yeah. also you wrote for... Right? You helped writing the episodes. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I improv all my lines, so I don't, I don't know. I'm making, I'm making them up on the fly. <laughs> um, but I think this is a perfect episode to have you guys here because the climax of you guys meeting and then everything that you guys went through, Ty was saying earlier, and you probably want to uh, kind of go into about their path to get to this meeting yeah. um, that they had. Well, we were talking about the fact, and I, Kara and I were talking about this last night, um, that they had to be beat up to this point. To create this space where, you know, Shari uh, started out with the earth must come first, screw everybody else. Drummer starts out with belt first, screw everybody else. And both of them, you know, see their worldview attacked, see their worldview beat up and have their own lives and characters and families beat up to the point where they reach this, finally there's this moment where their two streams can cross and they can say, you know, maybe we could try cooperating now. Yeah. And it's such, a, it's, it's it, like, think of how many seasons we've gone through to get to that moment that that can happen because that could never have happened before. Mm -hmm. Like if you if you put Shore or if you put Avasarala in front of Drummer any earlier season, Drummer's just gonna shoot her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like there's no conversation. Yeah, she's gonna take her out, and and it's and watching these two actresses that I've been working with for many years now have that moment together where they finally can reach across the aisle. Um, yeah, can you talk about that moment because you're completely out of choices and you have yeah. that and you know you're kind of you're going through and you're like I can wait till the bounty gets raised and die and everything. But talk about where your mindset is and having zero choices at this place. Yeah, I feel like. Um 
<laughs> every season I'm like, oh no, this is rock bottom for drummer. And then it's like, oh no, oh no, this now, okay, no, this is definitely rock bottom. No, okay, wait, hang on. <laughs> I like, I thought the robot legs was rock bottom <laughs> way back in the day. No, that, was, I was like, that was foreplay. Was like yeah. Chill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so definitely, I mean, the, she's lost her family. She's lost, um, everything, you know, we go from that, that fabulous sequence where she says goodbye to her family and it's a punch in the face. And then she's, you know, making her way back to the ships and Sandrani is like, eh, fuck you, there's, there's Pat. And she's like, oh, oh, takes that hit. And she gets back to her ship and there's fucking Naomi. And she's like, boom, that one. So she's truly just like raw nerves. She has nothing left. I think there's actually that, that sort of warrior sense of being already dead with her actually, because she has truly nothing. And, and that's, she says, that's the only place that, mm-hmm. yeah. There's no she says there's no place for me. There's no place for me. And the whole vast expanse, like, to have no place, truly. And yeah, and that's the only, the only possible way that this meeting can, can happen um, from drummer's perspective, is that this is the only, the only option to move forward. The only option. Um, so that's where she's coming from. And you're right. That. It could, uh, Ty is right. I mean, the novelist is right. Yeah. It could have not happened <laughs> earlier. Once yeah. every now and then. <laughs> yeah. <is right>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it could have not happened a couple of years before. No. no. Because no. of the fact that each woman was in the, to her own sort of uh, victory, become successful. It was all about them. Mm-hmm. They've now turned into people. They both suffered losing mm. families, mm. friends, colleagues. Uh, and they're both sick and tired of these nonsense wars. Mm-hmm. They are ready. They are yeah. very ready for this meeting. Yeah. Perhaps I'm sorry I never thought about alliances before. Yeah, definitely not with the belt. Not with the belt. Yeah. But now that they have both suffered and they're both with the people, trying to help the people, work for the people, stand mm-hmm. by the people, mm-hmm. they try to understand each other. Like, mm-hmm. I'm dying to see what she thinks. When, when Abbasarala gets closer to you and you say, oh, you came here. And she says, would you have come to me? Yeah. yeah. What's the answer? The oh, real answer. Oh, absolutely not. There's no <laughs> way. Absolutely not. You know, it's all I can do to stand there. And I think that that's something that's, that we've seen that is true about Drummer throughout the seasons is that she's like physically unable to compromise. Yes. Like, yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. She just can't. And that's why you're in that position. That's what's beautiful about it is because mm-hmm. you're like, I cannot be a part of what Marco is doing. But yeah. I am not going to be a bar. And then, you know, to be able yeah. to stand by what you believe in, yeah. to your life is at risk. Yes, yes. And to say, I'm not, like, we can work together, but I'm not going to compromise. Yeah, but then she reasons with you. Yeah. Then yeah, she yeah, tells yeah, you yeah, as yeah, to yeah. why you should help, no matter what you think. And it makes But right now, we need to form an alliance. Yes, there, and that's the only way. That's the only way. My, and that, my favorite version of two powerful people meeting like that is when neither of them gives an inch, but they find a way to work together. Mm-hmm. And so you're always trying to write to those moments, right? To the, yes. neither of them yes. gives up anything, but the, there's still this way that they find a way to work together. Mm-hmm. And yeah. these two characters, neither of them is backing down. You're talking about like the most powerful person in the solar system and the angriest person in the solar system. <laughs> 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 They're not backing down, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And the only way for them to move forward together is to realize, oh, I'm never going to get this person to be what I want them to be. So I'm going to accept them for what they are mm-hmm. and work with that. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's one of my favorite scenes to write. And it's oh, the, that's so cool. That's so cool. And I, yes. I think that's a tribute to, to great writing because if those characters came together and behaved the way you behaved at any moment before this, it would have been false. It wouldn't have worked. You had to be at the brink of your pushing point, pushed to your very limits. And what's great about this scene is Ava Sarala, a lot of times that we see her early on, she is manipulating, she's playing. This is the most honest that yeah. you see her in the face of your enemy and you have this exchange and you see that. In the yeah. scene you see it and you're like, yeah. oh my God, like drummer responds to that because you see through bullshit unlike anybody, yeah. you know. Any drummer other. does immediately. Yeah. That's why Ava Sarala is playing her last card on her last leg, telling her the truth. Yeah. When she does, she says, what if you're lying? And Ava Sarala says, I have given your people many reasons to believe mm-hmm. that, um, to hate me, mm-hmm. but none to believe that I am a liar. Mm-hmm. I think it's there and then that the drummer truly yeah. believes that, hey, look, she's telling me the truth. 
you know, she really means it. Yeah. Let's get together. Yeah. And I love the camaraderie. And, and the, the way we shot that scene too, it was so amazing. Yes. I mean, just to be like, I got, to, thank God, I got to just be still, because I was like, oh my God, I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm like standing very, very still, I got that oh. moment to focus. And then you come like swooping around, and like, <laughs> like long, I mean, all oh, your costumes are always so fabulous, but to witness them in person and to have to like really keep your shit together acting opposite is like, I, I oh, have to apologize for that. That's I was sorry, I love. She needs to intimidate people the moment yep. she arrives. And I then love she it. Works. I love I it. I do apologize. Oh, it's, it's a thrill. It's a thrill because it does. I mean, it does. Of course, that is. Yeah. That's part of her. She's still the same person. Yes. With yes. different ideas. My, my favorite description of that is that a Vosserola wears a gown the way drummer wears a gun. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, yes. It's, the, it's the tools of their trade. Totally. Yeah. To talk oh, about so process cool. for a that's minute, so cool. how do you create that? All the gestures, even when you were. You were, you were, ha you were, you're in a meeting and this might be a later episode. I'm trying to, yeah, this is a later episode. So I'll be vague about it, but you have this monster decision that you have to make and you need to think and the, and your people around you and you just go, mm, like that. <laughs> and they go, right. And they just fly out and they do that. Like, where does that, uh, how do you put that character work in your physicality? The moment I put her shoes on, I, I, I even uh, behave differently. It's um, hard to explain, but knowing the character never backs up, always, uh, you know, with a straight, uh, straight spine, um, standing up, um, talking to people, going ahead, no matter, doesn't care who says what. So the moment I put her dress and her shoes on, I feel like there's a responsibility here. She's on my shoulder and I really have to uh, sort of act accordingly. And then the rest just comes natural. Like, where am I coming from? Whatever has happened in the past? Where did we start this from? Okay, a short politician turned into a woman who's trying to understand his, uh, her uh, people. Now she's uh, lost, uh, alone, uh, lost her family, lost her job, and uh, uh, she's still not letting go of this because she either dies or, or carry on. Okay, then she's as strong as ever before, because she needs to be. Otherwise, if they, she has this feeling that if she plays a mouse, the cat will eat her. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So therefore, no matter what's happening inside her, the decor or face or you know, that stoic face that we never see her smile for seven years, six mm -hmm. seasons. Well, in the in the book, we call it the mask. That Basarola wears the mask, oh. and it's and uh, mm. there's a conversation where she's talking to her husband. She's come back, and her husband's there, and he says, "Is the mask heavy today?" Because he knows, he knows that it, what this is is a projection. I felt that, yeah, yeah. all the time. Yeah, and she's wearing this this face, a stoic face, because she needs to that poker face yeah. that no one can read or tell what she what she's up to. You know, just to kind of zoom out a little bit. What I would like to talk is about the beginning of your journey as drummer and towards the end of the drummer and how is drummer different from when you started? What has she learned up to this point where we get to this scene now? Um, I like to ask big questions like this and just stare. Yeah, I, 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 what are you going to say? I think what she learned was when you can space Marco, space Marco. <laughs> yeah. You could have ended this. Oh so, you know, being that this is uh, the, you know, this is this might be the last time we ever talk to each other again. Oh, I'm not No, but I think what I want to do, well, I want to say, you know, I had a moment where I talked about your performance, but one thing I want to say uh, about you is I had an acting teacher once named Sandra Seacat, and what she was, we were in class and we were talking about, you know, acting, and she says, if all these things that we worry about, all these, you have to let go, if you just put your head down and study and work hard and be undeniable, mm -hmm then everything will fall in place. And you are an example of that. Because when we first had Kara G on and first had Drummer, and you, your role was nowhere near what it became, and I remember seeing it, it was like, Jesus Christ, this girl's good. <laughs> and Ty and I mean, obviously they had that. And so just focus on doing your work and being undeniable, and people seeing that, and created this character that has become this one of my, probably my favorite character, I've said it over and over, you know, a drummer's my favorite character. 
Uh, can, can I add one thing to that before we ask the next question? Yes. Because we talked about this yesterday with Noreen. There was a moment we were watching the dailies of your first scenes and you're with Fred and you're with Thomas Jane and you know, that, those scenes. We, he was watching the dailies and he was like, oh, she's so stiff. What's going on here? And then he had this moment, like this light switch came on. He's like, oh, she's playing drummer as uh, English as second language character. Like <laughs> yeah. English is not her native language. <laughs> yeah. And so she's very stiff and formal because the moment was when you were talking to Naomi and you switched to Belter and it's musical and fluid and beautiful. And he goes, I get what she's doing. Oh my gosh, she's amazing. <laughs> and from then on, we were, we were locked in. Yep. Oh, and that's really nice. <laughs> that kind of detail and that, you know, the kind of work that you put into it. But from this epic journey that drummers had, how is she different from when we first see her till now? I think we see her, her limits just constantly being tested. And so she has grown and become even, you know, stronger. Yeah, when we meet her in season two, she's, she's working under Fred Johnson. And we imagine that, you know, she's had a past. She's already pretty tough. Um, there's, of course, that epic scene that, like, where she just, like, fucking rocks those two guys that shot her, right? And it's like, <laughs> okay, this is who this woman is. Love that scene. Uh, I know, it's so good, it's so good. Um, I feel like as the war unfolds the way that it does and as everything that, you know, goes on with Marco... Um, and, and, and she reaches a limit. She reaches the limit of being able to work under Fred Johnson. Um, you know, and she, she won't, she doesn't, she cannot compromise. She just physically cannot compromise. It's just not possible for her. You know, and so when Fred is, you know, giving the Earthers that, you know, back channel information and it leads to the death of a, a Belter ship, she, nope, cannot do that. I cannot do that. Or doesn't want to work under Ashford. She doesn't want to work under Dawes. She's... She would rather, you know, and we see her try her hand at, you know, maybe I'll just step away from this whole thing. And, and I think she's happy for like 30 seconds in season yeah. five, you know, with her, with her family. And she's making a nice life for herself, but she just keeps getting um, pulled back into the struggle, into the fight. So, so as she learns where her, where her limits are, um, I think she becomes harder. I think she becomes... It's funny because I want to say more empty and it's almost like her heart is more empty, but she's still just very full of purpose. So it's like this weird, like she almost like doesn't have her own soul anymore. She's got her, how she can be of use to her people and she's running on empty. She doesn't, she's lost love. She doesn't have that that same soul. I, I truly had that feeling of like feeling like she's already dead in season six. She is like Marco, inevitable. Like she's just created by these circumstances and 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 battered down to be this like raw nerve. Um, but because of her position and and her, I guess because of just her, her the essence of who she is, she ends up being the only person. To, to fill the role that she she mm -hmm. does, mm -hmm. you know she's she's there's I think there's no one else like her in the whole universe. Well, I mean the the classic she was forged in fire and she's hard as steel now. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you need those people. Yeah. You, and uh, yeah, it's interesting the similarities because you know you're talking about wearing the mask, and and she mm -hmm. and the only time I think I've really saw a drummer truly vulnerable, she did have other moments is with with you and Naomi. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and you have that moment of like the you know really feeling all your choices are gone. Your back is against the wall, mm -hmm. and seeing you take the mask off for just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's excruciatingly painful. Yeah. and the only person who could um, evoke that in her is Naomi. Mm -hmm. That's the only person. Yeah, you know, um, that's why it's such a punch in the face when she's waiting for her at the yep. ship. I love it's your like, oh, X-rays. She's gonna by make me feel something. Oh yeah. I love yeah, your yeah, X-rays. Yeah. We Thanks, talked thanks. a little bit about. X-rays and, and you guys got a, a real treat coming with uh, with drummer and Naomi's X-ray. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. So what about you, Avasarala? Well, because this is a real the consistency of the show never allowed Avasarala to step out. I mean, she was always in her position, in her mm -hmm. key position. Even when she loses it, she does not believe in it. She's like, yeah. nah, <clears throat> hocus pocus. Mm -hmm. No, we've, yeah. we've had some moments. The, the moment where she uh, is called back to service knowing that her husband is dead. And yes. she's putting her necklace on her hands. Oh, yes. Um, 
I, I think the consistency with the Basarala is that she does what needs to be done in spite of. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's it. Because remember, it's uh, episode two, if I'm not mistaken. Season one, she's on the roof, joined by her grandson. The grandson says, are you afraid of the rocks? She goes, no, I'm afraid of the ones who throw the rocks. Yeah. Season six, we're still dealing with yeah. Marco, who's throwing the rocks. This time covered with a stealth shit. Yeah. I mean, when you have such amazing writers that show you the path and give- Amazing them. writers, anti. Yeah. <laughs> and the novice. Yeah, I like to be included. And the novice. <laughs> and the novice. Yeah. Yeah. You guys yeah. sit yeah. right next to you, you gotta be included. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you gave, you, you gave birth to it. That's it. Didn't you? Well. You brought it to this world, so no matter what. You're always More there. like I made it out of Play Doh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So sophisticated, complicated. So called science fiction. By the way, day one when we started, I kept saying, why science fiction, for God's sake? They said, because it takes place within a couple of hundred years from now. We don't like to give certain time out, right? And I was mm-hmm. saying, why not futuristic? Because it looks very much like immediate future. Last year, mm-hmm. season six, I had a feeling that I was right. It is no longer a science fiction because season six is closer to reality of today's world than ever before. So why did we call it a science fiction? Just because um, of there's the spaceships and... Okay. <laughs> I, I think at some know, point, if, if the show continues, it stops being science fiction and just a drama. <laughs> just like a I documentary of what's happening. Um, I'm but always it, like, it's a political thriller. Okay. It is, indeed. With spaceships. A pr- with spaceship. political thriller with, with spaceships. That's, that's the only reasons that we call it. it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, pe- people like to categorize things. Um, People like boxes, so okay. there's a mm. box called science fiction, and people put stuff in there, and okay. our show goes in there too. So we're <laughs> boxed. Like, do you believe that season six reminds you of today's world a lot? I mean, Puerto Rico. When we started, I we're trying I to go to Mars. Yeah. <laughs> we're trying to go to Mars. The refugee crisis. Yeah. yeah. Which is the climate? The climate. Indigenous crisis. people wanting clean water. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't think that's a new thing. <laughs> but it's it's still, still current. Thing. But it's current. Still, yeah. yeah, we still, still don't have it. Yeah. One of the dilemmas of the world, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's incredible. It's, it, for me, it was an amazing journey, especially season six. I had seen similarities, parallels to this world in seasons before. Uh, like when I was reading the debate between Lily Gao and Abbasarala, uh, the TV was on, it was on CNN. And I was watching it with the corner of my eye with no uh, sound, of course. And I, all of a sudden, I saw Nancy Pelosi wearing a nice, beautiful red mm-hmm. coat, Chanel length, pair of dark glasses, and bob cut. And I thought, oh, of course, she wants to look young and relevant and because she's going to debate with this young woman. I was all I should do the same thing. So I immediately <laughs> oh, wow. sent an email yeah. to, to Joanne and I said, Joanne, can you make me more feminine this time? And then I asked her and makeup too. It was for the first time. Ella Basola let her hair down. Oh, oh wow. But Interesting. tell you a secret. Right in the middle of this debate, and I remember you were at the end of the theater watching us. I was, I was, I was sorry, I was sitting there having this debate with her, and all of a sudden, it's so hard to explain. I was sorry, inside me was like, why did you change your dress? Why did you make me look like this? Why did you do that? And I'm like, Oh my God, oh my God, I'm gonna have a fit here. And I'm like, woman, leave me alone. This is the best way of doing this. Nancy Pelosi did the same thing. (laughs) (laughs) And I was was like, who's Nancy Pelosi? (laughs) She was was so angry with me. Right? But the similarities, the parallels to this world. But isn't that (sighs) one of the main purposes of, of genre science fiction in particular is to be able to examine what's happening in our it, it current is. time it, it and culture. Give, it and... gives us permission to examine things like racism and mm-hmm. uh, you know, economic uh, disparity mm-hmm. and things like that without stealing somebody's actual lived experience. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if Daniel and I write some books about how much it sucks to be uh, a, a minority in America, we're just stealing somebody else's experience for our book. But if we make people belters, which, and belters are made up of every ethnic group on earth, so we're not taking one ethnic group and singling them out. 
then it lets it gives us permission to talk about it and it gives the audience permission to watch it nobody has to feel stolen from mm -hmm. it's okay and but it still it still allows you to think about what's happening in a way that then maybe might apply to the current day it might give you a little bit of insight on what's going on without directly attacking you when science fiction is doing what it's supposed to do, that's the best version of it. Mm -hmm. We're trying to do that. I don't know if we're succeeding or not, but it's the thing that you're trying to do. It's so true. You're right. This is what I have noticed too. With science fiction, animation, cartoons, your hands are open. You can tackle all sorts of issues, political, mm -hmm. uh, social, whatever. People won't get offended. They won't think that you're talking about them. Yeah. They're saying, oh, this is in science fiction. That's in animation, cartoon. But it goes straight into the subliminals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we, perhaps, those who are working with these genres are hoping for. That let's send our messages out this way yeah. without yes. getting them upset or offended or think about that we're talking about a certain race or this or that. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting too because, I mean, this show has such a diverse cast. Um, and that's not an accident. Um, mm. That would have to be purposeful and intentional um, because otherwise it wouldn't happen. And I remember early on being at a brunch with Dom and Frankie and Nadine and Jess Salguero. And we were sitting there and we were looking around the table at each other and we were like, oh yeah, in any other show, there would be room for one of us. And here we are, all of us on the same show. And I think that um, that's another sort of way to to be able to talk about um you know what does leadership look like what does it feel like what does a powerful figure feel like to us you know and when you see the same people playing the same um powerful figures over and over you know that really cements that 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 idea of what is possible and i think with this show you know we're suggesting a whole other way of looking after each other and looking after ourselves, you know, having powerful women of color um, running the show. Oh, we've never tried that, actually. <laughs> you know, we've never tried that. You know, might be a little different. That's a, you know, what else is there? And I think that that's another beautiful thing about this genre is that, that it's, mm -hmm. it's what else is possible. Yeah, at, at its best, that is the at question we're best. always asking, is what else is possible? Yeah, is is what we have now the only thing that can be? Yeah. Yes, Sorry. but we should really be thankful to you and uh, Daniel for, yeah. for putting us, putting all these female roles in a key position. Like when I heard that uh, Naomi was the engineer, I thought if it was 10 years ago, most probably Holden would have been the engineer. But now yeah. she is the engineer. What was going you know, on? I'm married to an engineer, right? I know. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, well, and, and don't give us too much credit. Yeah, yeah we did that in the books. but. But Narain Shankar, the showrunner, was very committed to that idea mm -hmm. and, and very supportive. And our studio Alcon, um, Sharon Hall, who developed the show the first season, she was very committed to that idea. And so when we ran into small roadblocks, which I'll, I'll, I have heard from other people, a lot of productions just go, oh, well, we can't do it then. Mm -hmm. Sharon and Narain and the studio and the show pushed through and said, no, we're going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And once everybody got on board and everybody understood this is what we're going to do, then the roadblocks suddenly weren't, just weren't there anymore. Like it was like everybody, well, they're going to knock this roadblock down, so we might as well not put it in the way. Mm -hmm. And it just got easier and easier as it went, which is great. And, and credit to everybody who was involved, the casting agents, everybody. They were all on board once we explained this is what we're doing. And, and that's what it takes. That's what it takes is for you guys with that power to say, we want to do it this way. Yeah, I well, once, and give Sharon and Noreen the credit Yeah, 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 yeah. No, mm -hmm. and, and power to them because, I mean, I lost out on a role once and they told me this, that they really, really loved me for it, but they already had a half Asian person on the show. Oh my God. Also, it was like a medical procedural show. I'm like, are you serious? But like, this is a real thing. That what were this, their names? What was the show? Right, yeah. Right? Let's fucking name some names. Um, I mean, last laugh. I'm very famous now. <laughs> right. But yeah, I mean, this is still like a very real obstacle. Yeah. But, you know, this show, uh, that would have to be intentional. I think, a, yeah. a, I think a great way to wrap this up, you know, you talk about being right earlier. You've always been right in, in, in everything you said. And I'll give an example of this. Um, I, we hadn't even said words to each other yet. No, we were touring this. We were touring. We, it was our first yes, day. Yes, it was our first they day. They gave us safety hats. Right. And we were in line. So before we shot. We didn't even 
We, we no, no, because what happened was before we even shot one frame of season one, episode one, we come together. We were, we were, um, and before we were doing anything, our first thing is they wanted to walk us through the sets, yes. right? So we walk up as a group. You were already there. You're putting your, we were putting helmets on, hard hats on the sets, whatever. And you were there. And In I, my I accident only. No, I can't. I can't. I can't do this. But you're putting your hat on. We're putting your. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm putting my hat on, and then they just have us go in this thing because I was a little late, so we were going up this scaffolding, and I was walking, walking behind you, and you were walking up front, and you were looking around at all the sets and everything that they were building, and and all the, the expanse universe, and you turn around and you go. Five years minimum. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, what? You go, five seasons. And, and you go, five seasons. Right. She said that at the beginning, before <laughs> we shot frame one, episode one. And this is a business that we all know. We've all been a part of a lot of shows five years that don't. Minimum. Like a show going five years is a yeah. big deal. But, yeah. but the queen has spoken. Yes. The universe listens. Yeah. Yeah. The universe He's like, right, the, well, the queen decided. So if, Even when we were happen. going through craziness, I would call her Raj. She goes, nah. Five years. Five minutes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were right. Yes. So yes. I think Do a perfect way to end this is what is the future? Of, uh, the of future this? is, uh, although um, every, everybody keeps saying, this is the end, this is our last meeting, this is. I, I do not. I agree with you guys. I'm totally sorry. <laughs> well, the queen has spoken. I don't think the queen this has is spoken. the end. I'm serious about it. Don't you think that somebody has given me a tip or something? I have no idea. I don't know what's going to happen next. But deep down, uh, in my heart, no, nah, this is not the end. I'm sorry, I'm not going to take this. But <laughs> okay. Try to shove okay. it down my throat. Nah, this is not the end. <laughs> the, end. The, the queen has spoken. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys so Thank much. You. My two favorite characters. Yes. I get to hang out. Yeah. I hope one day I would be able, if possible, to work with this amazing actor, gentleman. And dear friend again. Why are you looking yeah. tight? He's not going to be with because, us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he's going to last in the business. I don't think that kid has a future. If he has any idea. Right. I totally am. Do you care? I know. I'm so glad we got to do this. To work with both of you. Of course. I'm going to do it for you in the future. Yes. Sitting in my chair going, Wes, Carol, yeah. Carol, yeah, Wes, yeah. Wes, yeah. Carol. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank Wes. you. Thank you guys for hanging out. This is episode five. Season six of The Expanse. We got to hang out with my two favorite characters. And uh, say goodbye, Ty. Goodbye, Ty. Say goodbye, goodbye. Ty. Goodbye, Ty. Goodbye, Ty. <laughs> goodbye, Ty. <laughs>